So for our next application, this is going to be more of a general um, industrial example. And this general ind industrial example, I'm just going to tell you right now, right out of the gate, I don't know what this part is. That's why I just call it industrial. I have no idea what this part is. It looks really cool. It's very interesting. Um, and it has a really neat modeling technique that we applied to get to where we need it to be. Um, but maybe you all can write in or use the Q&A feature to tell me what you think this part is. I, I have a general idea that it is, it's some sort of like cam feature thing. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think it is. So here is the object. And, you know, it's a redesign of an old design here. And you can see here that um, it's some sort of cam thing that might be for forming um, a part. I have no idea. I'm not going to, I'm just going to stop guessing here. Somebody, if you know what it is, it's, but it's a really neat use case for reverse engineering because it's very complicated design here. Um, as you can see, I'll rotate this part around a little more when we get in Design X, but very complicated shape. And we utilize DX in the scan data to be able to effectively reverse engineer it um, pretty quickly. So with that, I'll go ahead and jump over to Design X. All right, so here is the part. There's no good way to screenshot this. Every single direction I tried to look at it from different directions. There are some interesting ways, but this almost makes it look like it's an optical illusion when you take a look at it. I have no idea um, which direction to screenshot it from. It's very difficult. You really just need to rotate it around and look for yourself. Really neat part, right? It looks like it's grabbing and revolving and forming a part, right? Down to a smaller size there really neat or it could be yeah yeah i don't again i'm i'm not going to speculate anymore so let's go ahead and just dive into the application itself and the modeling portion so here is the scan data if i turn that on there i gotta actually turn it on and you see here beautiful scan data and yeah as you look at parts when you use design X. It almost ruins you uh, when you look at design X and you start doing CAD modeling in general, you start looking at the world around you in a different way and you start looking at the world and how would I model that? How would I model that? So this one is one of those, how would I model that for sure? When you look at how it's built, it's, it's just a really neat looking part. And it's like a nice 3D puzzle. And you look, the, the history is not super long. So we'll just go ahead and we'll roll back. And we'll see here we fit an axis and draw a sketch. Let's go ahead and draw that sketch. Okay. Very interesting there. We're just doing one little. I'll just give it a second to update here. And we'll just roll forward a few. Okay, so the first thing we do on this one is basically just rough in the overall shape. And we'll do a mesh fit. So we'll go ahead and turn that solid off. They did a mesh fit here, and we'll go ahead and turn surfaces on. Really neat idea. Like, I, when I see that, I would have been... I, you also have to understand what the purpose of this part is and what's necessary, what faces have to be super accurate, which ones do not have to be super accurate, right? So there's a sense and you have to at least know the part a little bit to know. Again, I never would have thought, let's fit all of this as one. I probably would have fit this as one, that as one, trim them together. But, hey, I mean, that's pretty cool. They, they fit it all as one shape there. And then go ahead and 
move forward, we'll turn the solid on and cut. You see that they cut that away. Neat idea. I probably wouldn't have done it that way, but I'm not saying they're they're wrong either, right? It all depends on what what your purpose is and what you need out of this. So now they're uh, producing some sketches, uh, some basically producing reference geometry to then start building the the complicated part that you all want to know and I want to know how they went about doing it. And you can imagine it's, it's some sort of loft that's going to be there. So went ahead and extracted this guy. And then this one here. And then I'm pretty sure this consistently is the same all the way out. So if you go, if I just hit normal two here and turn off these that's going to be a constant this direction and I can do the flip-flop here to the other side oh no it's slightly different there I was thinking this was a constant extrude all the way out but based on the degrees you kind of have to look at how many degrees it goes around there all right, so they went ahead and created that. Let's go ahead and we went ahead and extruded that piece and merged it in. And it looks like they went ahead here. I've done this an awful lot where... I will I'll create a sketch that's mainly just for measurement purposes. So they're using this reference information. They're like, here, I need to draw this. Where is that in space? Where is that? Find the dimension of what something is, right? So in reference to the center lying circle. And this is all to dimension that helix there. So we'll see what's going on there. So they use that to then develop a helix. And we will turn that on down here. There we go. So you see here what they're doing is just defining what that is. And then creating a surface for it. very good very good we'll just see the direction where is this going where are they going to take us here on this wild ride okay now they switched over to defining the center path for that loft here which is really neat they just went ahead in and drew that and now let's jump forward adding more sections so they basically defined that perpendicular to this they're going to create another section there and just wrap around and we can always turn these on to, to kind of see them all at once and follow that all the way around the part here i think let's see how far it goes and if you click and drag over the eyeballs it will turn them on and off fast so you see here if i click and drag off on so that's just a neat little trick there uh that works inside of design x I've seen that in some other softwares before. Really neat. So you see here, we went ahead and turned those all on. And then now, the magic of creating a loft between all those sections. And then now I'm just going to clean up the view a little bit so you can see it. Um, 
and we'll turn off that uh, this helix because they're not using it at the moment and these two there now let's go ahead and roll forward a few more they extended it in both directions and they extended that now they're going to do some trimming trim those back do a loft between the two you see now we've created our tool trimmed it all together so that other trim was trimming this all the way around there sew it together and then use it to cut from the solid so cutting away from the solid let's just get that helix off the screen for now and then cutting your cutting your center and notches and all that really neat when you think about it look at it's not a very long history tree just the major feature is figuring out how to loft that all together to make it nice and accurate and create that part so really neat application this is something um just showing a, a different approach we're trying to break it down into a complicated loft to create this tool you could probably think of some other ways of doing it um, there are other ways of doing it this way was trying to do it as features as much as possible because you could have fit, fit all of that as um surfaces and just use the boundary fit surface or something like that but that's going to fit to exactly what's here instead of trying to make it an idealized surface um, so what a great little application i learned a lot by looking at this part just to see how somebody approaches it um,